All right, just uh, appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, first day, uh, or I guess the, the early signing period has begun. Um, very uh, unique calendar we're on, on now, a little different than we've had in the past um, in regards to the way that we approach uh, the signing. And uh, to me, it's very exciting to be able to bring in uh, 16 guys today. Uh, that signed with us um, and uh, from all across the country, uh, both sides of the football. I believe we got uh, eight on offense, seven on defense, and one specialist. And so just going to go through these guys. Uh, really want to be able to talk about each one of them. I'm really excited about the group uh, when, I, when I think about this class um, and what they bring to us, you know, just trying to emphasize length, um, athleticism. Um, you know, obviously speed's always going to be a variable that we're trying to improve here, but uh, really trying to get uh, bigger, longer guys. And, and, and it always is about fit for me. Uh, it will never change no matter where they come from. And so uh, this class is, is full of that, a lot of good balance here, just addressing needs that you always do and then be able to, to maximize uh, the, the current landscape that we're dealing with here uh, with recruiting right now. So starting out with, this is al alphabetical order, uh, Austin Barrett, offensive lineman, uh, just uh, so excited about him from St. Charles, Illinois, St. Charles East High School, and and uh, big, long athlete that uh, plays offensive tackle. Um, I love that he's a wrestler. I uh, love his toughness, love his attitude. Um, just um, can really, really bend well, and he's got a tremendously high ceiling that he's going to be able to attain to when he comes. So excited about getting Austin here and getting him going. And uh, next is Derek Bowler, wide receiver from uh, Miami, Miami Palmetto High School, uh, 6'1", 195, uh, right out of high school, good size, very mature, physically runs well, really, really good ball skills. Um, just, just love um, getting to meet him through this process. And he came up and saw us over the summertime and, and had a chance to, to have a, a visit then and came back on an official visit with his mom, Bonnie. So just a um, great young man that fits with us and he's so excited about him being here. Uh, Tadarius Collins, uh, also uh, out of high school, defensive lineman. Man, so excited about Tadarius. Uh, you know, he's got length. Uh, you know, he's six foot four. He's a basketball player as well as football. You know, I, I love multi-sport guys. You know, I've already mentioned that one of them's a wrestler. Now, you know, uh, Tadarius is a basketball player and just uh, guys that compete in other sports. And he's an edge guy that you're looking for and uh, guys that can rush the passer. And, and he gives us a lot. He can actually play either position, the end or the bowl spot. So really excited about him out of Northwood High School there in Shreveport, Louisiana. And then uh, Andre Carter, um, uh, the first transfer that we're going to mention here and uh, coming to us from Western Michigan University. And, and uh He's a big man, and uh, really excited about him. At six foot four plus and 265 pounds, and uh, he just graduated. Uh, he's not just you know physically a big man; he's he's mature, and and he's just uh, done so many great things for them there. And and uh, the the job that uh, those coaches did at that program, especially on defense, was impressive, and their defensive line was impressive. And and to get a chance to get him to come here and opportunity to play in the Big Ten. So just uh, love Andre. Uh, got a chance to get to know his mother. Just uh, so the relationship that they have is really special and they're just excited about bringing him here and he'll be in here mid-year and uh, have a chance to truly uh, to dive right into this and get a chance to really uh, uh, plug in and, 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 and earn a spot. You know, he knows that and that's what this is all about for everybody that we brought in. But uh, just excited about uh, the maturity he brings to us and, and the opportunity to be able to elevate his game and play in the Big Ten and, and to be able to, uh, to reach his goals and so excited to have uh, Andre with us. Uh, Amari Farrell. Uh, I'll tell you what, Amari is a really, really talented safety that we brought to us here from Lake City, Florida, there at Columbia High School. Got a chance to watch him play in person in the state semifinals and just so impressed with his athleticism. And he's, uh, you know, he's a big guy that can move and a uh, really, really good tackler. He's got really good feet and can run. And so uh, Amari's been with us, uh, came and visited over the summer, committed to us in, stayed true to us the whole time. And, and uh, a lot of people tried to come in on him because he's a really talented player, but uh, just really appreciate him staying with us and, and uh, excited about his future. And it's going to be very, very bright. And he's the guy that will be here mid-year as well and have a chance to come in and compete uh, to play right away. I know that's his goal. Orlando Greenlow, big old athlete. You know, he's listed as a wide receiver, six foot five, 210 pounds. But uh, I put him as an athlete. You know, He's out of California, uh, Lawndale, California, and uh, just um, can play receiver, uh, can rush the quarterback, uh, could be a tight end. Uh, not totally sure he knows that. We've talked about that. But uh, you 
fine, long athletes that can run. And uh, fits with us, came with his mom over the summer and just uh, fell in love with him and his attitude. And uh, you know, he's one that when the Big Ten kind of moved out west there and included USC and UCLA, that uh, adding them allowed us to really expand a little bit out there. And he was a beneficiary of that and excited to have Orlando with us as a part of our, our program now. And then Tyler Jeffries, uh, known as Bubba. And, uh, man, what a tough guy. Love him. You love his mindset. Loves the work. Plays mean and nasty. Uh, big guy. Alcoa, Tennessee. All they do is win. He's won like eight or nine straight state championships in, in a row, which is unbelievable. And uh, just love his family. A uh, guy that we really um, just, as, as a program, you know, fell in love with all of them because they just, uh, they love what we're all about. Uh, love football. Uh, he's going to come in here and work and train and, and uh, embrace everything about this program and, and make us better. So really excited about having Bubba with us on the offensive line. Uh, also, Jameer Johnson, another transfer that we got from University of Texas as a DB, uh, lost some DBs to graduation this year and uh, uh, the NFL. And so uh, really important to be able to get some older guys in here and gives us great length and athleticism to come to us here. And uh, he's another California high school player that uh, come come via the transfer situation. And so I uh, got a chance to spend time with him, get to know him here and and uh, bring him into the fold. So excited about him. And his parents came with him on his visit and, and and the mom and dad uh, really fell in love with our culture and our environment he's going to be in and excited about uh, developing him here and helping us you know, do great things defensively here with him in, in, in the secondary. Uh, Jamison Kelly, uh, another safety uh, coming to us from uh, Columbia, Mississippi. Uh, went to Jones Community College. Uh, man, I tell you what, what a physical football player. Uh, love how he can run and tackle. Uh, he's got great length, you know, 6'1 plus, close to 6'2, 205, 10 pounds. And, and uh, just bringing a guy that has – He's a guy we recruited out of high school, and uh, to be able to uh, continue to, to stay recruiting him and, and get to know him, we got a lot of connections down there. So just really love Jamison's attitude. Man, he loves, loves football. Loves to practice, loves to train, loves to work, and uh, brings that physical mindset to, to everything he does. And I'm <clears throat> really excited about bringing Jameson here and expect him to come in here and compete uh, this, this spring. He'll be here, Jameer, uh, as well as Jameson will be here uh, mid-year. Uh, also, Will Larkins. Big offensive lineman, the third one we've already mentioned is out of high school O line. You know, big six foot four, three hundred pounds. Played uh, very, very high school football down in Hollywood, Florida. Shaman Madonna Prep is where he's been going to school here and playing a lot of football. Win another state championship, won multiple ones at that great program there with Coach Jones, and and just uh, going to come up here and develop. He'll be here mid year as well, and just a chance to come up here and compete in our program. He's been here a couple different times. Came once as official visit, then came up here on his own. Uh, just just to be able to uh, continue to be around our players and be with our program and uh, just love his passion for Indiana football and his passion for what we're building here and the culture we've created. So really excited to get Will up here and he'll be up here in a few weeks getting ready to get in that weight room and get stronger. Uh, Max Longman, uh, an another transfer that we had here uh, today that I'm just so, so excited about Max and getting to know his mom when she came on his visit and, and uh, just a uh, guy that fits with us, you know, tough, hard nose coming from, from University of Massachusetts it's been a starter there for the last several years and, and just brings that maturity and that, that experience and that the, the, the grown man strength and the ability to, to come in here and play. And so uh, just uh, really excited about him. And I just, the more time I spent with him, even even as of you know recent as, as last night, talking to him and, and continuing to get to know him and just really um, knowing how much uh, he's uh, really, really fits here and it's been a, a dream to be able to play in, in the Big Ten. So Midwest guy from, from Michigan, originally and uh, just excited about Max and what he's going to bring to our program. Uh, also, Brock, Brock Lowry uh, is a quarterback of this class. And uh, coming out of high school, I tell you, what a, what a career. Just led his team to a state championship, uh, you know, there in Canfield, Ohio. Um, and uh, uh, just a tough hard-nosed competitor and that's how I would best describe uh, Brock he's going to be mid-year so he'll be here in a couple weeks um, but just he's just a winner you know and uh, plays the game with a with a chip on his shoulder runs the football throws the football uh, really pretty much ran for 2000 through for 2000 um, and even in the state championship game you know threw a touchdown pass a couple of those ran for a few you know caught one you know just uh, plays defense plays safety makes tackles uh, matter of fact that's what really caught my eye I joked with him about it when we first started recruiting was I, I loved his defensive film you know just he was coming down and smoking folks and and uh, just loves to hit and just has that uh, has that 
tough mentality to him that he's going to bring and uh, uh, just really uh, love his family. They came several times, got to come to several games and and uh, been able to um, get around our guys and just to really respect him for what he's done as a high school player. Now he's going to be here soon and being developed as a college athlete. So excited about bringing Brock to, to our program. And Tyreek McDaniel, I tell you what, uh, another uh, – a junior college transfer that uh, I just really um, was drawn to. There's just something about his mindset that he brings to us, and and he's coming to us from from Independence uh, Community College there in uh, uh, in Kansas, and from the state of South Carolina originally out of high school. But uh, Tyrese going to play safety for us, and and he brings the physicality to that position, uh, some more maturity and some some experience that uh, that we need. Losing three seniors uh, back there in that in that uh, rotation that we have, and so just want to be able to uh, get Tyreek in here. He'll be in here in, in uh, the spring semester here in a few weeks and, and get a chance to get him rolling right away. But, you know, big, over six foot tall and 190 pounds and really can run and physical guy. So, but just a tremendous uh, drive, uh, passion to be able to play uh, in the Big Ten Conference and be able to, to show and prove uh, who, who he is as a player and as a man. And and I'm excited, excited about that. I love just hearing his story and getting to know him and, and having his dad here with us and just being able to connect with them and just kind of see, you know, his heart and what he wants to do when he comes here, you know. So just expect him to come here and, and compete to get on that field right away and, and make a difference on our team defensively. Uh, Nicholas Radichick is uh, um, our kicker, an All-American, um, just uh, one of the best kickers in this country. Uh, we have a pretty comprehensive way of going about uh, finding our kickers, and, and Charles has been a great kicker. We actually, the same process we went through to, to find Charles, we did the same process with Nick, and, and he goes by Nico, but uh, uh, one of the best in America, and uh, and he'll be you know, he's a, an Army All American, and and uh, just has that kind of leg talent, and he's got to come do it, got to prove it, you know here. But uh, that's what uh, he's going to be here to do: is kick force, and and uh, he uh, brings a lot of uh, confidence coming out of Capel High School there in Texas, really. really um, very strong program out of that state with a lot of history and so has, has come from a very well prepared and has a really big and, and extensive soccer background as well even internationally so uh, very good athlete and I like that in the in, in our our specialist guys that have been multi-sport guys that uh, understand how to compete and do a great job of having that mindset uh, bringing that to our kicking game and our specialist game so I'm really excited about having Nico with us he's going to do a tremendous job here for us also Jordan Shaw uh, really was a, a tremendous addition to our our, our, uh, our program out of the state of California uh, really had a great opportunity to get to know his family and his dad played at Michigan and that kind of gave us that Midwest connection even though we're all they're all from from California originally and another opportunity because of us you know going out there to play in um, uh, with our conference expansion is, is given us a chance to be able to attract him he's got length he runs really well you watch his film he's got tremendous ball skills he's a great receiver in high school made a ton of plays with the ball in his hand a uh, punt returner that's why I look for when you look at DBs you love them to be punt returners. It shows their athleticism with the ball in their hand. And so really excited about bringing him from St. Pius X uh, High School out there in, the, in down in California. Just, uh, you know, a guy that fits with us. Excited about him being here. And, uh, you know, he wasn't afraid to come across country here and, and be a Hoosier, which is pretty cool. But we are we, we have a national brand. And you see that by this this group of guys we have here, all the different states represented. And, and we got alumni across this country. And so I, I think that's a huge benefit. There's no doubt about it as we continue to build our football program. And then we got Sam West, uh, a tight end that, uh, once again, another multi-sport guy, uh, was an SEC baseball commit prior to deciding he wanted to make his future in football. He uh, was a high school quarterback, played multiple positions. We're projecting him as a tight end. And uh, he's a big athlete. That's how I view him, you know. And uh, just a guy from Greensburg, Indiana here in our home state and uh, from a great family. Sister already goes to school here and, and uh, just got a chance to be with him. He got to become to come to many of our games this year, pretty much all of them, and, and just a chance to connect with him and, and his family and allow him to be able to truly um, you know, get ingrained with our guys from the very beginning and get connected with our, our uh, uh, commits that were already uh, joining us after the summer visits. You know, so But uh, Sam's going to bring a, a good athleticism to that tight end position, and he's another mid-year guy. So uh, many guys here, as I mentioned, are going to be with us mid-year, which is very important for their development. But the guys that aren't going to be training at home and competing and, and finishing out their, their high school careers uh, in there and be joining us in June. So I uh, love this group, uh, but it's just phase one of this recruiting cycle and uh, now ready to move on to phase two. So questions.
Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm okay. Um, obviously, you mentioned you brought in, you guys signed Brock Lowry. Um, you got Brendan coming back. And obviously, Dexter unknown for a while with the knee injury. What's kind of what's the plan at quarterback going forward? I mean, I, I, are you going to try to add somebody, an experienced guy? And I, I guess if you are, where are you at in that process? Yeah, so uh, in regards to Dexter, you know, he had surgery and a very successful surgery, and he's now in the rehab process, so really, uh, you know, prayers for that, and he's working really hard to get himself get himself back uh, to full health. Uh, yeah, to the goal right now, you know, as you saw, you got the numbers. We have three scholarship quarterbacks right now, and the, the goal is to add an additional one. Uh, and, and an older one would be ideal. And so uh, that's 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 the plan, you know, in terms of being able to have the, 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 uh, the number four guys on scholarship in that room, and especially with, with uh, Dexter status. So uh, we're just working through that process every single day. It's, it's never ending. Um, <clears throat> it will continue. These next several weeks and the goal is to have a, a guy in place here for second semester. Coach, you kind of mentioned there that this is really the first time we've got to speak to you since the end of the season and you made a big significant change to your coaching staff by adding Bob Bostad. I'm curious on the selection process and, and how you went about hiring and, and deciding that he was the right man for the job. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, so excited to have Bob join our staff. Coach Bostad is uh, unbelievably um, highly regarded offensive line coach in this country. Um, many would say he's the best line coach in the country. I would have to tend to agree with that. Uh, the short time we've been around each other, uh, just a great ball coach. Been at the highest level, coaching the NFL on the offensive line for several years produced many All-Americans uh, at, uh, at Wisconsin and uh, a place that's kind of become, you know, an O-line factory for, for many, many years. So that's, uh, he's a big part of all that. So just really, uh, that's what kind of drew me to him. Big Ten guy, Midwest guy from the state of Wisconsin, understands the conference, understands how to recruit, has recruited Indianapolis area uh, for a long time. That's kind of how we met. Uh, was in that recruiting process, crossing paths there, uh, but just kind of just from some some common, uh, you know, acquaintances that knew knew each other. And so when I, we had this position, and obviously we knew, you know, as we, the change was made during the season, and and uh, Coach um, Carey took over uh, it for an, in, on an interim basis, uh, we knew we were going to have to be able to find someone. So as some things kind of unfolded there, it allowed us to get uh, Coach Bostad here with us pretty efficiently. The goal was to get him here and get uh, to head out to recruit, and uh, we were probably. Uh, uh, pretty close to getting him right, you know, as, as, as soon as that happened. I think it was a couple of days that uh, he wasn't uh, able to go out yet uh, and recruit. We, we had to send out another coach in his place. But uh, so being able to have him, he was available for us and, and with the situation there at Wisconsin. So the bottom line is it found, a, I feel like, the very, very best person for the job. And uh, so excited about having him here and the job that he's already doing uh, with our guys in regards to recruiting and evaluation. And then uh, I know I when I had a chance to tell our recruits uh, that we had hired him, they were, man, they were so fired up. Uh, they know the track record and the history that he's uh, been able to produce everywhere he's been. So uh, really excited to have him and uh, anxious to be able to get uh, back in the office once we get, on the, get off the road and start talk, talking some ball with him. Sam, with the mic. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. How are you doing? I'm great, buddy. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Um, you talked about phase one being finished, you're moving into phase two. What does that look like? What positions are you targeting? Is it, you know, transfers, the JUCO level, high school level? What is phase two in your mind? Well, I would say there's, you know, um, <clears throat> breaking it down. Is this, this is kind of new in a lot of ways. A little bit last year, yes, but not to this degree. Um, because the way the calendar was structured, uh, it's really th this next phase is really a, a transfer phase of focus um, because you have a window from January 4th through the, um, the 9th where you can bring in players and uh, that are, it's only for transfers to be able to make visits to your campus. We can't go off campus, but they can come to us. And so that's the real focus here, to be able to fill some key spots, so some positions of need, uh, to be able to kind of some balance some of those off. And so it'll be kind of across the board, both offensively and defensively. And uh, and then after that phase is done, phase three to me is back out recruiting again. And I and I can see us adding some more high school players. And, and I think with the way that things have kind of evolved, uh, you definitely have, um, you know, with, 
there's still two classes of guys that have COVID years left that are still out there in, in circulation. And that, that keeps these spots continuing to be able to be, you know, used up in, in some ways. And it's, it's kind of uh, allowed some high school guys that maybe would have already been signed and been somewhere else uh, still be available. And so uh, definitely aware of that. And so that would be probably phase three as well. So and then you just got some guys that maybe uh, won't be done or be out until the end of the semester and they'll be here in the summertime. So the next focus is be able to get the guys that uh, will be available to uh, come visit in early January to be able to be enrolled by, by the second semester. high school kids there that have been with you now technically through three different offensive line coaches they stuck with you through that <laughs> can you tell us about that process kind of getting them to, to stay with you through all of that yeah, that's a great that's a great point and uh, a unique situation for sure uh, I think uh, step one was great communication you know, I personally called them all uh, as the things transpired in each development along the way and uh, had communications with them and their families. That way they knew what was going on. And so uh, it was it was tough. There's no doubt. Uh, but I, I think you, you the, the common theme was they were committed and uh, uh, really connected to. IU football and our university and the, the culture that we have here. And as long as, you know, I was here and, and knowing that wouldn't change, uh, they were um, they were good to be able to stay and kind of see how, how things transpired to who would be in that position. So uh, I would continue, continue to communicate with them throughout this process. And they stayed true to us. We stayed true to them. And uh, we're just open and honest with them about it. And, and I think that was probably the key. And so I respect them a lot for staying with us through that. And now the, you know, one of them, Will's going to be here. In, in January, and the other two are going to be here in June, and so excited to have all three of them. I think it's a really good group of guys that uh, will bring some uh, definite uh, uh, talent and depth to that offensive line, and they're obviously young. They're freshmen out of high school, but I can't wait to get each one of them here. All right, Wilson, Wilson and Gwen. Tom, you uh, referenced this earlier, but what is your um – what is your process for recruiting a kicker? How do you evaluate them? And um, what, how did you end up uh, getting connected with Nico? Well, first of all, you know, it's, it's unique for specialists because you don't sign one every single year. So it's, you know, the, the kicking services and, and Coles is one of those and Sailor's another one. There's some others as well, but those are probably the top two, you know, in, in the country. And so uh, they know who, who's looking for a scholarship kicker in a given year and, who, and who's not. And so once the word gets out that you're looking for a scholarship kicker, then you do a really good job of through those services and all of our connections. I got a lot of connections and, and uh, Coach Teagarden and, and – uh, um, Coach McInerney, all those guys do a tremendous job, and, and uh, all the guys that uh, that run those services, we have a good relationship with them, and so we they know that we have that, so we bring them, and we have camps, and we have them come, we kick for us, and so we have a systematic way of doing that, bringing them here. We have a whole evaluation process we go through once we get them here. So it's first of all, it's identifying you know who you want to invite bring all the best kickers in America to our campus and I want to see them kick and we video everything and go through everything and have it all done the way it's supposed to be and it's pretty lengthy and then we go through and we just narrow it down from there and then you kind of say okay this is you know you kind of rank them and then you start going through and try and then you got to try and convince them to come and start recruiting them so it's a it's a very very lengthy process that you go through and then uh, you know Nico's the guy that, that came and kicked for us and then you kind of go through and you you just continue to evaluate we watched all all these different competitions he was involved in and there several kickers as well and try to see how they handle pressure and how they're able to respond to adversity and and they started going to these camps you know, they got they go they go they kick quite a bit for you and then they got to go to another camp and then kick some more and then kick some more and so you just try and see who's the most consistent who can handle the the the, the, the difficulties of that situation the pressures that that puts on them because at the end of the day they got to be able to kick in front of you know thousands of people when it counts the most so uh, it's a pretty uh, i would say thorough process we go through Feel really good about it, and we think we got our guy. Hi, Coach. Hope you're doing well. I'm great. How are um, you? Good. I, my question was pretty much already answered before, but I'm trying to think of as this group of 16 people, how would you describe, like, what makes you so excited about these, about these guys? What is the Well, you know that they fit with us, and they, they're excited about being here, and they, they got. Uh, 
a chip on your shoulder, something to prove kind of guys, you know, guys that, that uh, you know, you go through and you really try to find who, you know, is, is that got the talent to play in this conference. But there's so much more to it than just that. It's the guys that are going to come here and, and do little things the right way. And, and yeah, there's no doubt they're all going to have to grow and mature, as, as all, you know, guys do when they come out of high school. But, uh, you know, just the ones that want uh, the things that we want for them and, and care about school and, and want to do, you know, things the right way are going to be, you know, on time to everything and showing up to workouts with a, the right mindset and just able to work through tough times and things don't go your way. And, and, and I feel like we got a lot of guys that really fit those kind of things. And obviously you, you got to get them here and they got to show that that's uh, that we were right in our evaluation of them. But I, it excite me because I feel like we got, you know, a broad group of guys, different positions that we needed uh, that have a high level of talent, but they also have a uh, tremendous work ethic to them and, and want to come here and want to compete and get better every day. So obviously, it's like every other signing class. There's a lot of optimism. You know, not anybody I don't think ever stands up here and says that they, they don't like their class, but at the same time, they got to prove that we're right. And they got to prove that we made the right evaluation and that they were the right guys to come here and, and, and want to be able to help us continue to build our program. Mason. Mason. Hey, Coach. Um, ever since they switched to the uh, this early signing day ever many years ago, usually – the majority of the class is wrapped up at this time. There's sometimes a few spots. This year, you guys still have, by my count, like, you know, maybe 15. I know it's a moving target, but more than more than 10 open spots left on the roster. Is that just the norm going forward, or you know, because of with the portal and all the basically free agency that's going on, or or is this a one-year blip? I mean, it seems like it might be the norm. I was just curious your thoughts on that. If you're gonna have to recruit almost as many guys after the signing day as you did before. Yeah, I, there's no question. Uh, I think I. Uh was one that mentioned that, you know, a couple years ago that not knowing this was going to happen, um, that I felt like that we'd have the majority of our class in place, you know, after the first signing. And uh, but with now with the new rules with the portal and when it when it, you know, they couldn't go in until that Monday that we were out recruiting, which created a flood of just um, that was a crazy several days now for everybody trying to evaluate, and figure things out. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to change. So if this structure continues and the, if the calendar stays the way it is, I think you're going to continue to see uh, this progression where you have a good chunk of them signed right away, but not near as many as before. And you're going to have another, you know, 10 to 12 or whatever left, you know, in regards to both transfers and even a few high school guys. They definitely will be some more high school, I think, and, you know, fill in some of these spots. So, uh, but yeah, I just think there's just, uh, you know, the calendar's different. You know, a lot of guys couldn't even make visits. So that's why they now have those, those days in January, which we never used to have before, where transfers can take visits when that's going to be. Last year, I think we had one or two. This year, I can see us having a whole bunch, you know. So that's a whole new area now to expand to. And then the, the February is going to be way more involved in trying to find guys that maybe they got, uh, you know, didn't get seen or evaluated properly the first time. And you have a chance to find those and, and continue to, to look for guys that fit your needs. And so, yeah, I think you're going to see this being the norm moving forward. Could be wrong, but that would be my guess based on what I see and how I see it playing out. Every year probably be a little different, but numerically. But I think there's definitely going to be more in the, the, the second signing than we've seen in, in the past couple of years. Mason, and then we'll wrap up with Mike. Coach, I'm, I'm curious. You mentioned earlier how in this recruiting class you really wanted to emphasize length, athleticism, and just overall get bigger and stronger guys. And then also going back to the end of last season, you were talking about with a quarterback prospect, you really liked the idea of having a dual threat guy who can both run it with his own legs and then make plays through the air. Uh, when you look at the 2023 team that you're building, what's different about it versus the 2022 team in an ideal world? Well, I, I think, you know, for me, uh, you just continue to, you, you got to have depth. You know, to me, I want to have more depth on the offensive line. I want to have more depth on the defensive line, you know, and, and be able to withstand. We've had injuries these last couple of years, unfortunately, and some key guys, and, and it's hurt us, you know. And so to be able to have that, that's a huge part. Uh, but but I, I think, you know, I, I do, we have tried to emphasize the length piece. Um, and, and that, to me, I want, a, I want a, a big physical football team, you know, that's able to, 
to play the, the the style we know we got to play, and then also be able to play with tremendous speed. You know, so that's that that the speed part never goes away. You know, I want to be able to have that ability to run the football on defense and and, and make plays and, and and recruit that speed on offense and continue to to do a great job being dynamic. We just got to be more dynamic on offense. We know that we got to create more explosive plays. You don't have to drive the length of the field with so many different snaps involved, but uh, and then eliminate those big plays on defense. So to me, that's what I want to be able to do is you know, we got to get better on both sides of football. We got to be better on special teams. All those special teams did a lot of good things in 2022, and so uh, being more consistent in in some of those areas, you know, that uh, that matter most. But to me, uh, it's just the fundamentals of being able to to, to run the football effectively uh, is a huge focus. Uh, being able to throw the football effectively and uh, to not put so much pressure on our guys that we have to be perfect on as a, on a drive. We can create those more explosive plays, and and I want to be able to do that with that that style of quarterback and to help us and help our football team and it helps our defense and, and both sides where we play better, you know, more complimentary football. I don't think we did a good job of that this past season at all. Uh, and it hurt us and we got to do that. I don't think, I think the last couple of years it hasn't been what it needs to be. There's no question about the result, but I'm talking about the, the complimenting of one another on offense and defense. And so we want to do a better job of that. And then to me, that's just being better fundamentally and, and getting guys that are big and physical guys that can, that can help us block better and tackle better. Last, last one. Hey, Coach, I'm curious with Jameer Johnson. You know, is that a guy you tried to recruit out of high school, or how did that relationship come about? And, and what's the the fit there? I mean, I know I know you like to put your corners in spots where they have to be able to cover, you mm-hmm. know, on an island one on one. Is he a good fit for that? And you know, did did he like see how successful Taiwan Mullen was here? And, and you know, what did that influence how he? view the opportunity. Yeah, Jameer, he was a national recruit out of high school, so we actually did not to get in on him. Uh, he was uh, um, recruited at, at a very, very high level, and we did not get a chance. We didn't have a connection to get on that, but yeah, there's no question uh, what uh, Taiwan has done here. Uh, even even Jalen, you know, those two guys are all Big Ten, all American type guys, and and uh, played at a high level for us, and and uh, I loved his length, uh, his ability to, to, to play vision coverage as well as some man is important, you know, and but we wanted to try, we were trying to get bigger at that position and get some more length there, and he, he brings that, he's played, he's had experience in the in the Big 12, and, and that was big for us as well, and so, and just, uh, just trying to, you know, comb the country to find the guy that gives us a combination of length and speed and the, the flexibility to do what we need to do in the back end, which is play some multiple coverages. We're not a one coverage team and uh, I don't plan to be, but uh, you got to find guys to fit with that. So we're just trying to get some longer, bigger guys. I think he fits that. And then you always have to have the ability to play some man. All right, thanks, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. LEO.